This video is something different where I tell you all my thoughts and experiences in this just one specific camera. Of course, in this case, it's the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. So instead of saying everything all in these separate camera comparisons, this one video will pretty much be all of it together in one video. And there's also more specific things about the camera because there are some things where I don't have enough time to express during these comparisons. In these videos, I do want to show you as much samples coming out of the phone cameras. And of course, they will be some things I can't like b-roll of the product. So let's get this started. This video is sponsored by Flexispot. They sent me a desk to show you guys. So I figured why not use the Xiaomi 13 Ultra to shoot everything. And this is in your typical room lighting where I do have high ceilings. So by the time it gets to my ground level, it, it's pretty dark. So this can give you a good idea how it looks like shooting in your own room without any professional lighting. This specific desk is the EW8Y standing desk. It's 48 inches and I have it in the bamboo slash white combo. There's also different colors as well if you don't like the specific option. Like they have a pearl black one or a black slash bamboo one or like a darker maple wood cover on top. So it's nice to have many options and not be stuck with one. FlexiSpot is known to have adjustable standing desks, so they do have up and down buttons on the side to let you choose the specific height you want. If you happen to work in multiple heights, you can actually save that specific height to the four different buttons simply by holding on to it exactly on the height you want. It will save it to that specific button, so it's nice to be able to save time without holding the up and down button every time you want to switch the height. Since the desk is pretty hefty, it won't shake or vibrate a lot, especially if you bump into it or if you happen to do some work on it. The biggest highlight for me on this desk is the charging ports. Now I don't have to have a charger on my desk, it doesn't make me feel more cluttered and it keeps everything more minimal. There's also a jar on this desk where I can keep all my cables there and all these little knickknacks to even furthermore make my desk more clean. I do wish there was some sort of organization in the drawer or have the option to. Because of being a tech guy, I do have a lot of little cables here and there and a lot of things do pile up and it looks like a big gigantic mess when I open it so I wish there were some sort of dividers. Even my previous desk is from Flexispot which you can probably see in the shots. From my experience, I would recommend it to anybody who needs a hefty high quality desk that's also adjustable. On top of that, if you need more organization or want things to be more clean and even more convenient then I would highly recommend the EW8Y model. I will have the link down below if you do want to check this desk out. But anyways, let's move out of my room and I'm going to give you my thoughts about the camera UI and since my friends came over that weekend, I did shoot a lot of camera samples of food and just New York in general. Let's start off talking about the things that stood out to me. I do like how I can swipe down and see a bunch of options really quickly because I feel like using my thumb to swipe down is just more natural to get to certain settings instead of always reaching to the very top where I cannot do it with one hand and I would need to use the others like other UIs from other Androids. Now, when I first got this phone in my hands a while ago, I did notice a little button on the lower left to quickly switch the aperture. But after a couple of days, I did notice there was a camera UI update. After doing that, that button was gone. And that button is really handy because when you're taking pictures of food and having a lower aperture really blurs out a lot of the image. So being able to quickly switch from the f1.9 to f4.0 makes the camera experience so much better. Now after that update, it takes 3 steps to switch apertures, which is not as smooth or natural. So to me, that camera update was more like a downgrade. And if you switch to selfie mode, that button is still there to switch focal lengths and is also in portrait mode, so the button is so handy to have, but is gone in the normal photo mode. Now there are some quick buttons you can press on the very top, like I can switch to like authentic and like a vibrant. And there's also a HDR button which I can turn off, but after turning it off, I can't turn it back on, it's just gone. So if I want to turn HDR back on again, I would have to swipe down, press on the HDR button and turn it back on. So again, the three step thing, I'm not a fan of. Because if that's a quick switch to turn it off, why isn't it a button to turn it back on? It's just like going backwards and it takes more time than it should. I wish it was just a switch in general or better yet, make it a customizable button. Like I use a timer a lot for self portraits when I do these comparisons. So if I can replace that button as a timer switch or any button that makes my life more easier, that is a game changer. Now for the video side of things, I do like how I can switch resolutions very quickly by tapping on it, just like the iPhone. So if you mainly shoot your phones in different FPSs, it's really nice to switch from A roll, which I do mainly 24 or 30. And if I do any B roll shots and I would do want to slow it down, quickly go into 60 by tapping on it. It just makes the running gun experience so much smoother rather than needing to go to setting all the time just to change the FPS. 
There is a teleprompter in the camera app, which is pretty nice to have. But if you're shooting yourself with the back cameras, you can't see the screen, so it is kind of useless. You can use the front facing camera, which is 1080p, and I would say it's the weakest camera out of all the cameras on his phone, so I wouldn't suggest that either. Because it is 2023, and a lot of phones nowadays have 4K for their front facing camera. Another thing that stood out to me is the movie aspect ratio, where you do have these black bars on top and bottom, which makes your B roll or your shots more cinematic. There's a bunch of other modes, but I don't really use them unless there's like something specific. For example, time lapse. But it's nice to include all those other features. They even have a pro video mode, which they call it director's mode. And of course, they do have a pro mode for photographers. Now, when I'm in the city taking pictures or videos, I do like the focal lengths that they give you because I think the 2x to the 5x range are pretty normal and is more than enough. And if you need any more, like 10x or so, it's like you already intended to zoom in and you know you need that much. So since that's already pre-planned, you know you will need to slide more or pinch to zoom. And this is like a little detail I like is that they show the millimeters under the number. Like the 0.5 is 12 millimeters, 1x is 23 millimeters, which as a camera savvy person, those are the numbers I prefer to see. Now, as you may know, they do have different color profiles, the like authentic and like a vibrant. There are pros and cons using these specific ones, but to me, I do like the Leica Authentic more because it's the colors, it's different. The Leica Vibrant Color Profile makes your images look like it's coming from a typical cell phone, which is nothing wrong with that and many people do like those colors, and it does handle a lot better in HDR situations than the Leica Authentic Color Profile. Personally, I do like the more contrastier, darker shadowy look because it's different, especially coming from a cell phone. On top of that, there is a wide inch sensor, which is great for many things like getting background blur more, much more easier and better low light performance. And out of all phones that I've used, I think this have one of the best portrait mode experience they can give you. I do like the master lens system where they give you these common focal lengths like 35mm, 50mm, and 75mm, although at 90mm, the soft focus effect is pretty unique. Now, the system is pretty nice if you're a photographer, you are familiar with it, and I feel like you would like the feature. But for normal consumers, they probably don't understand or know how to use it to its full extent. So I feel like they would end up looking for the 1x, 2x, 3x buttons, which is not there. They would have to know there is a full body mode and a non-full body mode, so they would have to turn it on and off by swiping down. Which is very inconvenient and most likely they are already used to from past phones seeing that 1x, 2x, 3x button. So it's just something they would automatically look for. In general, I do like the camera and the experience overall. I personally do like the Leica authentic color profile and the one inch sensor. So to me, this is my preferred phone to take pictures with. That might not be the case for you because you may not like the colors or just a lack of HDR in the Leica authentic profile. And yes, you can switch to Leica vibrant to get better HDR photos, but as a regular consumer, it just may be too complicated to use because you would always have to think about what specific color profile I should use. If you want something very simple to use where you just snap and everything looks great, I would recommend the Pixel, but if you don't mind learning about photography and want to take it more seriously, then I would say the Xiaomi 13 Ultra is something to take a look at. So I hope you guys like this kind of video where I just talk about my thoughts on the whole camera experience on these phones. If you do want to check out some camera comparisons with the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, I'll have some up on the screen. Let me know your thoughts about this phone or even this style of video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys later.